All right. So, um, hello and welcome to another episode of Industry Celebrities. My name is Kimberly Scott, a former video girl, now a podcast rookie. Um, Industry Celebrities is a podcast where my friends in all sorts of industries allow me to ask them questions and discuss in a ask them questions in a discussion format about their passions or industry, which allows me to hone my interview skills, um, making them all a celebrity to me. If you would like to share your knowledge of your industry or your passion on industry celebrities, please email me at Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y, at marketingdoer.com, or listen to other episodes on iTunes for those iPhone users, Kimberly D. Scott, uh, Anchor, uh, which are Android users, or just go to YouTube and search Kimberly D. Scott. So now, today's guest is a colleague and mentor of mine, Miss Sue Weston. Thank Hello. you. Oh, wow, colleague and mentor. Wow, that's <laughs> well, pretty. That's pretty significant. <laughs> well, I can't say old time client. No, old time client is good too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, you were one of our first training uh, clients. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So thank you for um, joining me today. Glad to be here. Tell the listeners, which I probably have 10 now, <laughs> they're growing, um, a little bit about yourself and what industry you're in. Okay. Well, Sue Weston, I have been in one industry, actually. I did not go to school for this industry, but have been in this industry. I went back and looked at the numbers, and it's actually, this is my, will be my 41st year. So that's kind of wow. crazy. Kind of crazy. Um, I originally amazing. hailed out of the Chicago area, mm -hmm. um, uh, born into a family with six kids, had a mother who never worked outside the home or even had a car until I was like a teenager. Um, <laughs> what was that like? And you have to remember that their times are a little bit different. So yes, we have yes. to, you have to kind of mitigate that. Uh, some of the, some of what I'm going to say here. Okay. But, so hold on. So it, it, it wasn't a big wasn't a big thing for you not to have your mom not to drive when you were a teenager? no actually um we walked to elementary school okay. we basically walked to junior high um growing up in chicago you grow up very accustomed to a transit system okay. so you're used to getting around on a bus and Got i can it. remember getting on the bus to go get groceries which yeah. is kind of weird but <laughs> until they built something a little bit closer but okay. i went to school in uh, northern indiana at a school called valparaiso university uh, and I'm actually now currently serving on their national council for the School of Business. So I get to kind of weigh in on where students are going. And uh, they just opened up a new major on aviation. They're looking into logistics. Uh, logistics is a huge thing in yes. our in our society today, getting products from point A to point or services B, yeah. to point B. Um, my, my brother's a truck driver, so yes, yeah, I and, it's, about logistics, and it's not so. just it's truck, it's air, mm -hmm. it's train. train. It's in fact important. So I get to do well, that. Cool. So I get to weigh in on that, talk a little bit about my industry. So that's a fun thing for me. I've been I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I did uh, teach for a couple of years, a couple of semesters up at the University of North Texas okay. in the residential property management program. Okay, but how did you get into the how did you get into the apartment biz? Very weird. Okay, so <laughs> everybody has obviously everybody's got this you know sin singular kind of journey that brings them to this industry <laughs> they do it's amazing now that we have those degrees but we didn't back then so I moved when we when my husband and I moved to Texas that was in 19. 19... 77. Wow. wow. <laughs> so a lot of you listeners yes. have not even been born yet. So I was born, but uh, I was only five. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> we moved there and I had had a really uh, intense job in Tulsa. We came from the Tulsa area. I worked for a company where I was um, being like a traffic manager for barges on the waterways of the U.S. So what that's was your, kind of weird. What was your title? I was a marine <laughs> equipment coordinator. That, that, and that is. doesn't mean that I get to order around <laughs> a bunch of soldiers. Or be on a submarine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but it was very, it was very in the moment. You know, it was, it was intense. There was a, a two-person office, lots of chemicals, and some things were dangerous. And so when we kind of, kind of made a break and came to Dallas, 
I thought, okay, I'm just going to kind of step back and take it easy. So I got a job as a receptionist in a property management company. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. That's Would it be Walden? No. No? It was, a, it was a group called Century. Okay. Um, they were a little operator of, of properties, and I, was, I just was the receptionist. And it was here at LBJ and Midway in Dallas. <laughs> uh, and worked there, and they they actually had a property supervisor who supervised their holdings. There were only seven holdings. And so, is that, wait a minute, for, for non-apartment people, holdings would be apartment communities? Apartment communities, okay, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. um, and at some point, the Canadians who owned these properties separated from Century. So I stayed with Amstar. Mm -hmm. Amstar was the name of the management arm for these Canadian properties. And these properties were, it was kind of a joke. The Canadians said, hey, let's go buy some stuff in the US. Uh, so I, uh, good news, bad news in any industry, working in a smaller company, the, the, the good news is, is that you have an opportunity to grow the, the, the wealth of your knowledge and experience because you're wearing many hats. That's always, that's always a benefit. It is a benefit. You can't do some of the cool stuff that the bigger companies do, but you still get this great opportunity. So over time, um, just stayed in the management arm of, of property management, um, not so much ownership entities, but got to hook up with some just extraordinary extraordinary mentors, people that I still call friends today that encouraged me, saw things in me that maybe I didn't see, put me into dangerous situations, but, su <laughs> but supported me. Yes, yes. Um, so, so you learned on, you learned on the, on the job, yeah. true on the job yeah. education. And, and grew learning, in yeah. responsibility mm -hmm. and found kind of places where I felt more comfortable. I, I can't say found my passion. I think the passion was already there, but found an outlet for my passion, which mm -hmm. happens to be in HR and, and people development. And, so. and education. I always, I always, when I think of you, I think about education yeah. and you educating everyone or our industry about the like like one like cam or, or cas for the suppliers right um, um and yeah i mean you definitely oh, have a passion uh, over time uh, i feel that that's an important contribution so over time i've become a subject matter expert have helped to write some of those credential programs i'm i'm in the middle of finishing one here now here in dallas and excited about that so that's kind of where i found my niche i have an ability i think to communicate uh, but I don't, I don't get excited and there isn't that great buzz unless it's presented to me by the student. So it's mm -hmm. not something that I can manufacture. It's something that I feed, if you almost mm -hmm. will. I feed off of the energy that, that somebody who goes, oh, wow, I get it. Yeah, I can see how that works that way. So You're I'm a huge fan. excited about the light bulbs going off Yes. In oh, my gosh. That just, that lights me up. Yes. That lights me up. Hey, that's a passion. Yep. However you got it yep. or, or have the outlet to do. So not I can definitely say not very many people get that opportunity right. to find it in it, even in forty it's, years or even it's, ten. It's a blessing. Well, good. It's a blessing. Good. Why should um, anyone new or old get involved in you know the associations around them, or I, even on, on a state or national level? I have to tell you that no matter what industry you you are in, there is an association that governs. The I tell people that all the regulations time. Regulations or guidelines. I actually was in a was in a supplier success program in San Diego last week, and in the in the class was a lady from the National Pest Management Association. <laughs> so she was taking supplier success, but she was an association that had credentials and their own kind of. Uh, own kind of programs of excellence. So um, I think that for me, I can just only speak from my own experience. They've been the place that has allowed me to see how other people conduct their business, to learn best practices, to meet people. I, I have to tell you that the power of your network is the Amen. magic in any career. Yes. Um, and that happens for me at the local level. I actually worked for three years for the National Apartment Association, so I understand that, that juxtaposition, mm -hmm. yeah, with the owner managers, supplier partners, and then the association being kind of the the conduit or the enabler of those relationships and and coming together to meetings, yeah, to meet on, to educate, to t take uh, trainings, whatever it is, no matter what association you're in connects the dots and, Correct. and and leads you to other opportunities, leads you to connect other people, pay 
you know, whether it's a passion for, uh, like in our industry, in the apartment industry, it's PAC, you know, the, or a passion for education. No matter what the association in any industry is, that connects the dots. There'll be an so, outlet. Yes, it's out, just been, absolutely. it's been the most powerful conduit. Um, and I, I realize there's a, we're very fortunate here in the Dallas area to have a large association. There are other associations across the country in our industry that are small and volunteer mm -hmm. staff led. But I got to tell you that owner, owner members and product supplier members are really eager and will actually help to create that environment yes. and support it even if it's not there to begin with. I've, I've seen that uh, being on, being PSC chair last year of TAA, the passion that you find that people want, they want that outlet. They want to be able to give, up, give back to their association, to their... So uh, uh, my next question to you, and it's my standing question for everybody, is um, what would you tell your younger self? <laughs> my younger self, wow. Or maybe it's your, the self from 10 years ago. No, I don't no, know. No, I, mean, my, my, I, I, no, I think that that's, a, that's a, certainly a valid question. I think uh, two things just pop into my, my mind that, that really would, would stand out for me. The first is to quit stressing the details. Um, it's you, you focus, you kind of tend to micro focus on issues or problems or hurdles. And actually in the long run, they all, they all come out. I've learned over time that when I reach the point of being most frustrated about something, it's not going right. Even if it's something like fastening a bracelet <laughs> or, or doing something manual, um, but, but certainly connecting or, and I, I get to right at the frustration point. If I stay with it, that's the exact point where it works out. Mm -hmm. So I think stressing less about the, the minor stuff. It's just minutia. Mm -hmm. It's not like I told the cam class today. It's, it's, it's not who you are. It's cam class. It's not who you are. Yes. Um, and then the other thing I think would be to, Find a find that network. Find that place that supports you. I don't think I valued that as a as a younger person, and certainly in my younger days in the industry, I think I felt I'm pretty confident. I know I'm good. I know I can help. But I've learned more that there is there is value and pleasure and giving in being able to see yourself as needing support, needing help, bringing people in and asking them to be a part of your life or your career, or your project. Um, so that network, I think I value more now than ever, ever. Well, at least, at least you value, at least you, it, the light bulb went off. Um, yeah, it, it, is, it really kind of it really kind of happened over time. Mm -hmm. I think you find yourself in situations, and it's those people that 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 network that you've established over time, and maybe not even intentionally, maybe unintentionally, yes. and you go, oh, I need to call, and all of a sudden, it's there. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I wrote down a note the other night that's that uh, it came out of a video in Cam that the, um, your sphere of influence or your circle of influence is way more important than your title. Mm -hmm. um, I believe as that. As a young too. person, mm -hmm. I strove for titles. I strove for a position. Wow. I, I needed to be that VP. I needed to be, you know, head of human resources. And my younger self should know that it's not in the title. It's that sphere of influence. It's where you engage, insert yourself, and add value. That's 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 great. what lights you up. I I totally agree. I never understood um, the that title. Like somebody wanting that title, it was always a uncomfortable feeling for me to give someone my title. I'm like, ah, I'm a salesperson, you know, like, and, and, but everybody's different. I, I learned right. that, you know, at different stages in their lives. You know, my mom was all about her title, you know, my dad didn't really care, you know? So yep. I, 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 a reflection and self-awareness, I think gets you to that point, in my opinion, with you. I think that what you said about really honing in on your network and, and also giving back, to mm -hmm. it, like what you do mm -hmm. with, you know, with the associations and your teachings and, you know, when people want to visit with you, that you visit with them, um, giving people your time, right. you do a lot of that. And, and that is, that's how you build that network. That's the, whether you know it's there or not, but that's how it all of a sudden comes full circle. Well, it allows me to take advantage of, of knowledge, experience. 
Um, you know, when you're in an industry for as long as I've been, I'm almost a, I'm almost ashamed sometimes to tell that 41 years is a long, long time. If you're doing the same thing for 41 years, you're not growing, you're not moving. Yeah. Um, I read voraciously. Mm -hmm. I, I realize that things are changing. And you, if you're going to teach today's students who actually, to be honest, are having to learn about jobs and roles that probably don't even exist yes. today or are certainly changing yes. today, you've got to be up to speed on yeah. that. You have to stay current. Yeah. And you, I, I've never... I mean, you've been in the industry 40 years, but you, I don't think you've done the same thing all 40 years. No. Yeah. No. So I was going to say, like, oh, kudos to Loving you. Loving it. Yes. Having, a, having a great time. I'm having a blast. Yay. Well, I'm, I'm glad you are. So if you want to learn more about Miss Sue Weston, I believe your website is easy, right? Susan <laughs> at SusanWeston.com is my is email. My email. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can reach out if you want to learn more. Um, but I would like to... Thank Miss Sue Weston again for joining me today. Um, and if you uh, search Kimberly D. Scott, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel when doing that or to my iTunes podcast. Uh, you can follow me on all the other social networks, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, Snapchat, LinkedIn, all those great places. And until next week, stay positive and keep growing. Thanks. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Kimberly.